All right, good evening, everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Moira Anderson, and I am the Associate Director of Public Programs here at Crystal Bridges. It's so wonderful to see everyone here tonight for the performance of Lineage by Ensemble Hansori. And let me just take a moment to say how wonderful it is to see you all here in person, as well as those who are tuning in virtually for this first in-person performance here in the Great Hall since March of 2020. I have to tell you a little secret. This is my first time speaking in front of a live audience here in the Great Hall since then too, so I'm a little nervous as well. I'd like to begin this program with our indigenous people's acknowledgement. I want to recognize Crystal Bridge's roles as settlers and guests in the Northwest Arkansas region. We acknowledge the Cato, Quapa, and Osage, as well as the many indigenous caretakers of this land and water. We appreciate the enduring influence of the vibrant, diverse, and contemporary cultures of indigenous peoples. We are conscious of the role in colonizations that museum have played. And as cultural institutions, we have a responsibility to engage in the dismantling of historical and systemic invisibility of indigenous people's past, present, and future. We choose to intentionally hold ourselves accountable to appropriate conversation, representation, connection, and education to facilitate a space of measurable change. The performance this evening is a part of our celebration of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month and centers on artists and stories of Korean and Korean American heritage. Titled Lineage, the concert features four movements that meditate on stories of cultural inheritance, adoption, and dispossession, personal, historical, and artistic, performed tonight by Ensemble Hansori. Violinist Erjean Khan, who will be leading tonight's performance, intentionally crafted this concert gathering four contemporary composers, Sun Hee Cho, Jane An, Jong Hee Kong, and Sone Kim. We have the incredible opportunity to begin each movement with a pre-recorded video message from the composer, giving us all an opportunity to learn more about their approach and the significance of the work. And to further add to your experience of music and art, we have included excuse me, collection connections into the program handout this evening. And following the performance tonight, I encourage you all to just take one moment and view two works online from Crystal Bridge's permanent collection that reflect the themes of tonight's performance. Mujige Jolo by Ji Ha Moon. I'll leave this up for just a moment. And time for you and joy to get acquainted by Yu, Ju Young Che. As I previously mentioned, tonight's program is possible due to the thoughtful curation and creative dedication of the performances this evening, Urjin Khan and Hyun Kim. And on behalf of Crystal Bridges, I want to express our sincere gratitude for their collaboration. I'm going to be passing the mic to Urgene momentarily to continue introducing the composers and the performance, but first, I'd like to share a little bit more about each performer and the ensemble on Sori. Pianist Hyun Kim is a native of South Korea who joined the University of Arkansas in the fall of 2018 and currently serves as the director of the Opera Theater. She performs and teaches throughout the United States and is frequently engaged in performances and master classes in Asia, Europe, and South America. Kim collaborates with instrumentalists from prominent orchestras, including the Cincinnati Symphony, the Atlanta Symphony, Hong Kong Philharmonic, and Seoul Philharmonic, as well as many others. She performs with singers from the Metropolitan Opera, Houston Grand Opera, Seattle Opera, among many others. And she has performed at the Aspen Music Festival, the Grandin Music Festival, and the Luca Opera Festival in Italy, and has appeared as an or orchestral pianist and harpsichordist with the Aspen Festival and the Boulder Chamber Orchestra. 
Kim has, has served as a pianist for several competitions, and her performances and interviews have been broadcast on KVOD-FM, Colorado Public Radio, and Rocky Mountain PBS. Eugene Khan is a violinist, researcher, and full professor of violin and director of graduate studies at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville. Her work came to light through her advocacy of African-American composer Florence Price, and her recordings of Price's violin concertos have been cited and praised by sources such as The Guardian, The Wall Street Journal, and The New Yorker as an important contribution to American classical music and has aired on programs like NPR's Songs We Love and APM's Performance Today. Urgene is a concert master with Fort Smith Symphony Orchestra and the Arkansas Philharmonic Orchestra. She has been involved with North Mississippi, New Haven, Albany, Lancaster, Eastern Connecticut, Tulsa, Baton Rouge Symphonies, and the Civic Orchestra of Chicago. Urgene aims to continue the work of equity, diversity, and inclusion, and belonging by exploring the ways in which American classical music can intersect with and highlight forgotten narratives of the past and thus shape the musical values of the present and future. Performing together, Ensemble Hansori's name is inspired by the idea of coming together and finding unity through sound. In Korean, sori means sound, and han embodies meanings such as good, righteous, significant, bright, complete, embracing, and prosperous, among others. Together, han sori aims to musically explore and express the values and hopes for a better life that come through mutual understanding, cooperation, support, and unity through shared empathy. Please join me in welcoming Hyun Kim and Urjin Khan of Ensemble Hansori this evening. Good evening, everybody. It's so wonderful to see you. Um, as Moira suggested and has announced, it is, it's been a crazy year and uh, it's been very special for us to be able to prepare for this concert. Um, as Moira also stated, all of the composers have submitted electronic uh, e-introductions by way of video, so I will not uh, try to talk away too much of the recital, uh, but Hyun will be explaining a little bit about the first two pieces, starting with Night Train at Chuncheon. So I'll pass the mic to her. Music sometimes gives us more experience than um, pleasure. Music allows us to experience time and space. In this sense, Night Train to Chuncheon evokes nostalgia for Korean youth and more generally for those who pass by our lives like trains in the night. Modern Korean society forces both young and older people to be diligent and hardworking for the nation's prosperity and individuals. As a result, many Koreans admire the so-called escape from everyday life. Chuncheon is an idyllic place with valleys and low lakes and where people, young people usually commute with nature. They discuss life's meaning and social issues or make romantic memories with their lovers. Chuncheon is an isolated place best assessed by train. Young people travel there carrying backpacks on the economical night train. Chuncheon has become a symbol of nature and romance. The night train symbolizes the passages from darkness to light, stress to joy, and freedom from the everyday burden of responsibility. In this piece, we will hear sounds from inside and outside of the train heavy steel wheels rolling on the piano, and the different sounds of the train passing by on the violin. 
The sound of cutting through the still air, passing through deep tunnels, chuka chuka choo choo, chaga chaga choo choo, maybe, right? And the klaxon horn. So now I would like to introduce our composer's message here. Hi, I'm Jong Hee Kang, and um, I'm very happy to meet with you all online um, at this concert. I'm currently sitting in a practice room at a school that I'm teaching, so you are seeing um, the grand piano and the wall. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the piece, uh, Night Train to Chuncheon. Chuncheon is a city, it's a capital of Gangwon province, uh, which is located uh, uh, northeast of Seoul, which is the capital of South Korea. And uh, there is a famous, really popular K-pop song called Train to Chuncheon. And uh, when I was writing this piece, uh, I got inspired by the K-pop melody and I wanted to use a little bit of the melody and write a new music, new concert music, so based on the melody. Um, but you're not going to hear the melody at all uh, until at some point uh, as a segment, um, so it might not be easy to recognize the melody, but that was my intention. Uh, so I wrote the piece originally in 2012 or 2013, and at the time I wrote this piece for the Now Ensemble, who's based in New York. And the ensemble has a very unique instrumentation in terms of timbre to me. Uh, and they are, uh, they include flute, clarinet, um, piano, double bass, and electric guitar. And I really enjoyed writing music for them at the time. And I wanted to uh, try something new for me too, in terms of the style, which was the combination of new classical music and kind of jazz music, kind of poppy music. So I was happy with the result at the time. And recently I had a chance to uh, present this music to Arjun Kang and uh, she asked me to uh, revise the piece for her ensemble, Hansori, uh, for violin and piano. So that's what you're going to hear tonight. And I am, I am very grateful and very happy that uh, Arjun Kang and Hyun Kim will be premiering my piece tonight. And I also uh, thank you for those who made this concert possible. And yeah, so I hope you enjoy this music and enjoy the concert. Thank you.
The second song is Sound of Soundless, Karak. Karak means melody in Korean. On April 16, 2014, a disaster occurred in South Korea that deeply saddened the whole nation, the sinking of the Sewol Ferry. About 300 teenage high school students went on a trip just before their graduation, and they never returned. The cause was not the old ship, but those innocent children were sacrificed to the cold sea by the irresponsible ship's crew and the government's slow and untruthful response. The disaster exposed Korea's dysfunctional leadership at the time. The Seoul ferries, captain and crew members escaped first, leaving passengers behind. Just like a Korean leaders such as the chairman of large corporations and lawmakers who were also hiding out in times of crisis. A nationwide movement of Korean citizens emerged to uncover the truth, which ultimately resulted in the impeachment of the president and key executives. But nothing will change the sadness of losing these beautiful children. This piece is a song of condolence for survivors and the young souls who were lost. The beginning is a violin solo that captures the beautiful Asian landscape and the excitement of travel. In the middle, the ferry lists and gradually sinks into the sea. The last part is the sound of the deep, cold sea where the ferry sank followed by an old Korea folk song. So here's a composer's message. Hi, my name is Sang Hee Kim. I'm originally from Korea and currently I'm based in New York City. I just wanted to say thank you first for inviting me to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Month with amazing fellow musicians and composers. It is truly an honor for me to be a part of this amazing event. My piece, Karak, was composed back in 2013. It was commissioned by Multicultural Sonic Evolution and it was premiered in that same year. The title Karak means uh, melody in Korean language. The commission of the piece came with a quest that I should use a Korean traditional folk melody and therefore I named the piece Karak, which means melody. The folk melody that the piece quotes is called Seya Seya which means bird, bird. The folk melody was written in 1894 to rebuke the social and political oppression at the time during the Japanese occupation of the Korean Peninsula. So in, in general, uh, in this piece, there is very fragile and restless characteristics throughout the whole piece, which sort of reflects the helpless situation of the Korean Peninsula at that time. There are two important uh, musical elements that I want to mention regarding the piece. The first one is sanjo. Sanjo is a term used for instrumental solo music in Korean traditional music. And it usually starts from a slow rhythm, slow tempo, then gradually becomes more and more virtuoso and improvisational. You will hear some sanjo-like passages in this piece, especially in the opening section of the piece, which I think can be translated into cadenza in Western music. Also, karak is rooted in a fixed rhythm pattern called changdan in Korean language. There are many, many different uh, kind of changdan, and I chose tobolim changdan in this piece. Tobolim changdan is typically used for the traditional dance of 
태평무. 태평무 is a ceremonial court dance performed by the queen for the well-being of the nation. And the rhythm pattern that was used in this dance piece is called 터벌림 장단. 터벌림 장단 typically has 10 beats and they are usually grouped as 3 plus 2 and 3 plus 2 with strong emphasis on 2 and 7. So I think this sophisticated rhythmic pattern and the very simple triple metered folk melodies 해야 세야 have created quite interesting music together in this piece that you will hear shortly. Once again, thanks to all who are listening and special thanks to Urgen for the beautiful performance. Hope you enjoy the piece.
I want to talk briefly about the next piece, our third piece. It's for solo violin. It is called Beyond. And of course, you will hear Sun Hee Cho uh, introduce her piece in just a moment. But I wanted to point out um, a perhaps straightforward um, connection to this concert's title, Lineage. Sun Hee Cho, the composer, is actually the teacher of the other three women that you'll be hearing tonight. And so it's very much um, a reunion of the women who have now spanned all different continents and are living in different regions of the world. And so this live stream and also the concert itself is a very special coming together of different lineages and generations. I will um, let Sun Hee Cho explain her solo violin piece next. Hello, my name is Sun Hee Cho and I am a composer based in Korea. Beyond for solo violin is a meditative piece free of tempo and dynamics. The melodic lines are repetitions of small intervals as if emerged from an orbis. The music unfolds with ascending and descending gestures then flowers into an open cadenza and eventually descend back to where it began. I would like to thank Arjun Kang for performing. I just wanted to quickly mention that that was the video as intended. Um, I was supposed to give a warning that there was going to be an abrupt ending, but that was what Sun Hee Cho uh, intended. So <laughs> nothing was missed. <laughs>
the last piece is Gene On's Folk Songs Revisited series. We will be performing one song out of the series. This is part of Gene's lifelong project to incorporate traditional Korean folk songs into a language of Western classical music. And it occurred to me that as I and Hyun were programming this together, the idea of lineage becomes so interesting and complex when we're talking about that in, in the vein of identity and heritage. And as Moira mentioned in the introduction, the ideas of adoption, dispossession, um, and inheritance when it comes to culture, which has become so global. Uh, I feel that Jean Ahn's piece is a beautiful illustration of our connection to history and the ways in which our inherited language of Western classical music interfaces with uh, Korean culture. Here is Jean Ahn. Hello, this is Jean Ahn from California. I'm really grateful to be part of the program today. I met Arjun during the pandemic when she hosted a podcast and I was her guest. We talked about music and Korean culture and we immediately became friends. I was really excited that she was doing a concert and I wanted to share one of the pieces from Korean Folk Song Revisited. Korean Folk Song Revisited is my lifelong project that I've been doing with soprano Regin Lee. I collected Korean folk songs and remade it with melody and piano part so I could introduce the Korean folk songs to Western performers. And uh, tonight is the first time I'm doing with violin. So it was an interesting um, collaboration, trying to find the right sound, to find the right Korean inflection and vibrato with the violin. So we had a lot of discussion and trying things, and it was very interesting. Uh, the piece is called Mongung Po Taryong, and it is about women waiting for their husbands who went out to the sea. Um, so they have this anticipation, but at the same time, they're worried, and they have this turbulation going on in their inner minds. And while the melody is really very peaceful, the piano portrays the, uh, the inner mind. So piano is exaggerated, and that's their emotion. I'd like to thank Hyun and Erjin for playing this piece. Thank you. Thank you. 